<laughs> What's up, you guys? Um, I'm Liam. I'm Madison. And we're so excited to talk to you today about how to dance in Ohio yeah. and our journey with it. Yeah. <laughs> Do you guys have like a warm up or a favorite warm up for your voice before going on stage or any types of tools that get your voice where it needs to be? Um, I think we actually, we each have the, both of us and the other um, autistic actors in the show each have a personalized warm up that was created by our voice coach that we had on the show for like all of rehearsals and stuff. His name is Chris York. He awesome. is the best. Uh, and we had like some individual like voice lessons with him throughout rehearsals, both in the studio and once we got into tech here and he made us each like a quick like 10 minute warm up and like a five minute version in case we rush for time. So usually we'll all kind of like, on our own times, like do those at some point before the show. Um, last night I did it at my apartment before I came here. Sometimes I'll do it up in my dressing room. So yeah, it's yeah. kind of just like, it's our own vibe of whatever we need that day. Sometimes, especially if it's like late in the day or if it's our second show of the day, I don't need as much. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's so cool. I love how there's two of them. There's like a, a, a quick one and then a long one. There's options, love it, love it. Okay, Madison, what is your get ready with me routine before going on stage? Um, I actually, I like to do a little trick with my makeup where I draw my eyelashes onto my eyelids so I don't have to wear mascara. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> I, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> that's so awesome. Okay, so this is kind of a question for both of you. At the end of the production, that's really well acted and the chemistry is amazing. And it kind of feels like you're watching one of those rom-coms where they live happily ever after and yeah. everything's just perfect. So as actors, what do the two of you do to like prepare for that? It's more about the connection between Drew and Meredith at the end um, because the the conversation we have right at the end of the show is only the even though we play love interest throughout the entire right. show it's only the second time our characters ever actually speak basically to each other like have yeah. back and forth dialogue mm -hmm. um and so the whole show is for us at least not for the every character is kind of a build up to this moment yeah. um and i think they purposefully didn't want there to be a kiss one because like they these two characters kind of they, there's no sort of like anything leading up to that that would imply that they would kiss right away um but also i think the fact that our, we touch for the first time in this moment yeah when we're about to dance like it was very choreographed with both our director and our choreographer and the mm -hmm. two of us to feel like what felt natural in regards to like okay so we both like look at each other we put our hand on our like arm and waist there and then we hold hands and then it's just kind of like a breath together at the end which yeah. is like to show like the comfortability that they have found with each other um and um yeah so it, it kind of blacks out like the the lights black out at the end of the show uh right right at the end of that to show that like connection between drew and meredith that has like finally happened over the past like two or so hours mm -hmm. Okay, Liam, what's it like knowing that you're on the stage where Neil Patrick Harris and Denzel Washington, Brian Cranston, and Tim Curry all were almost every single night? <laughs> yeah, um, I, I definitely, I'm gonna, I'm also gonna bounce this to Madison in a second because <laughs> um, I, I'll, I'll answer first. But it is like really cool. Like this, this theater is first of all, like just so historic. It's so old. There's so many stories. Like mm -hmm. all Broadway theaters have so many, so many like stories behind it. But like this one specifically, like if you look it up on Wikipedia, like there's a whole subcategory on Wikipedia being like the ghosts of the Belasco theater. Like this is a beautifully <laughs> so cool. haunted theater that it. we love to be in. We started tech on Halloween, which mm -hmm. was so crazy. <laughs> um, and it's also just like such a gorgeous house to look out to. Um, there's, oh, I don't remember what... There's something to do with the chandeliers that they're like original. Uh, like, yeah, the what, the lights as well are like original. Yeah, there's there's like murals everywhere that have been like refurbished and like actual murals from like hundred like a hundred years ago. There's a huge room down in the basement that is like like truly like the size of a basketball court. Like I've never seen a back backstage space so large that is so large and it's called the elephant room because Harry Houdini stored his elephants there when he did uh -huh. shit like a hundred years ago. Yeah. So it is like so cool to like, not only like make our Broadway debuts in this space, but just to truly like stay on the stage knowing all of the history and like the greats that have been around it. Yeah. And Madison as a huge, go ahead. Oh yeah, <laughs> no, I, I have a, I have a really big connection to this theater. I, um the first Broadway show I ever saw was Hedwig and the Angry Inch in 2015 with John Cameron Mitchell and 
I, I had been like, every time I'd been out to the city, like after that, I would stop by the Belasco just like, you know, to see what was going on and stuff. And like making my Broadway debut in this same theater where I saw like my first Broadway show, like is just insane to me every day. And like, I'm, I'm so grateful that I get to like be in this space. And sometimes you 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 know which seat it was, and you like oh, you, you can look up and I see like if people into, who were sitting in, in the okay. seats that you sat in your first. I look show. up yeah. to like the I was in balcony seat one fourteen, the first one. So if anybody ever sits there, that was my seat, the first Broadway show I ever saw. Um, <laughs> wow. I always like to look up there and wave at the end. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. I love that. It's like a personal connection that goes yes. like. <laughs> I love it okay my producer going off of that my producer noticed when he was there that there's a blue dress hanging uh hanging up during the production is that to honor the blue lady ghost of the Velasco it's I don't think that was necessarily the first intent of it um I, I but I think it could be interpreted that way I if think, you want. So I think if, if the ghost wants to interpret it that way then she definitely I can think they have a version of my dress I'm pretty sure they have they keep hanging up while the shows are not going on backstage, like my finale dress because it's also blue. <laughs> and yeah, we've so got, yeah, we've got a bunch of fun little fun little rituals and stuff in the space. Yeah. Oh, for sure. that's so cool! I love it. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Okay. What do you think is on Meredith and Drew's current playlist, and what songs help you get into character? Oh boy, we have character playlists. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> during um. During our one of our re our workshops back in June of 2021, I made a Drew playlist and I shared it with the other seven, um, and then all of us made our own. Um, oh gosh, what did I put on? I'm gonna hold on. I'm gonna pull it up. Yeah, no, I need to pull mine up a little bit. I have a few good ones. I yeah. should I stay or should I go? Is the first song in the playlist? Absolutely. Because my uh, there good. she goes. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of silly little songs like that. Um, yeah. I've got a lot of. I have like um. I've got like a Rocket Man by Elton John. Yeah, I've got um, Heroes by David Bowie, uh, Baba O'Reilly by The Who. I'm a big, I'm a big classic rock person. Uh, so like yeah. so finding stuff that like kind of fit the genre of like Drew and like his mindset, um, but also like sticking true to like what I love was really um, important to me when like thinking about this. I've got a lot of like Pink Floyd, some Queen mm -hmm. on there. Um, a lot of Elton John, some Fleetwood Mac. So yeah, it's it's okay. kind of uh, just the songs that I feel like fit within his story, but also are stuff that I've just like grown up loving. Yeah, mine is yeah. kind of similar. I've got a lot. I've got a lot of like pop rocks like on here. Um, some good things. Just like a weird mix of things that I think just like either reminded me of Meredith, like. Or like gave me Meredith vibes. Australia, vibes. Australia, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, or, or absolutely. Yeah, close to me. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah, that's awesome, and I love that there's like a balance of like songs that you that are true to yourself too. So yeah. I love mm -hmm. it. Okay, so Madison already talked about her first Broadway show, but Liam, what was your first Broadway show? Uh, <laughs> my first Broadway show was uh, I saw Waitress. With like the original, okay. I think it was the original Broadway company, except uh, Kamiko Glenn had left and Jenna Ushkowitz had gone in. Um, and I saw that like right after the Tonys that year. So it was like summer of 2016, I think. Uh, yeah. And I, I, I'm really glad I saw that when I did, because I remember it so well. Like I have so many friends who like saw their first Broadway show when they were like, six and it was the lion king and i was like which i saw the lion king on sunday and it was the best night of my life oh, but know. um <laughs> but but like i'm so glad i remember it so well and i remember that feeling of like when the curtain went up and i saw jesse mueller for the first time um and i just like wept the whole time because i was like well i just i want to do this forever this yeah. is so cool i was in the back row of the mezzanine um and it was beautiful and yeah Wow, that's so crazy. I, I'm like trying to remember what my first show was. Oop. I think it was Newsies. <laughs> yeah. I saw it on tour a few times. I never saw it. In yeah, tour. I saw it on tour. Wow. Yeah, no, it's awesome. Okay, is that y'all's favorite show then? Or do you have a different show that would be your favorite Broadway show? My favorite show uh, 
it's it's cliche, but it is rent. Um, I it's just like what got me it's into really good. theater. I used to uh, before I did uh, theater at all. I like enjoyed it as a kid, but I used to do this after school program called School of Rock, which was like um a mm. music program where I would do guitar and other like instrument lessons and like sing in various like tributes to rock bands and stuff. So like I I grew up like being the front man of like this like teen music uh, organization. Um, and so uh, when I first, I first saw the 2008 like filmed live on Broadway production of Rent and I saw Roger and, and, and I was like, oh my gosh, like this is like, he's like what I love to do. Like that's, that's me. Like mm -hmm. it's not me. Like that I was 11. And I'm, that's I who I want to be. Yeah, but that's who <laughs> I want to be. I want to play this role on Broadway. Um, and I, it, so I, and I just love that score and I love all of the, I love how it is sort of unfinished because um, unfortunately Jonathan Lyles passed like mm -hmm. on the first preview, but I think it, it holds so much heart and it, and it truly was so groundbreaking at the time. Um, and small fun anecdote about that, uh, Will Chase, who played Roger in that production that I saw, or the, 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 the in the movie, or the films live on Broadway yeah. version, he, uh, he came to our opening night because I had mentioned at one point that like, I would love if he came because like, he's the reason I do musical theater. And he came up to me at the after party and was like, Hey, and I was like, oh, Hey, I know you. And he was like, I'm here for you. And I was like, yeah, I do musical theater because of you. Yeah. <laughs> so that was, that was really cool. Um, and he's, he's super sweet. And we've emailed a bit since then. Um, but yeah, for me, it's rent. And I, yeah. I got to do it in the, in the, in the spring at paper mill playhouse. And I covered Roger and got to go on at one point um okay, but cool. yeah yeah how about you yeah cool. I don't know. I've got a lot of favorites Hedwig is probably always just going to be in the top for me because it was like when I when I was 13 and like a lot of like the implications of it I still didn't understand but there's just something that like I just like gravitated towards it um I really it, it's just such a beautiful show. It's a raw show that even if you don't really know what's going on just by watching it, you're, it, like, you're, you're already, okay. you're invested. You're pulled into those characters. It's really, it's really great. And the music, um, it's just, oh. I do, so like, yeah. I love Rent a lot too. Little Shop. God, I've got so many favorites. Um, <laughs> and they are, they're all, they range from like Hedwig to like Secret Garden. So like there's <laughs> so, like so yeah, many no. like. It's like, but like my top three would include Rent, but also Hello Dolly, which is like. Yeah. Very different. <laughs> Well, you can have more than one favorite too. So Absolutely. that's awesome. Okay. Um, if someone with autism wants to get into the theater world, what's one thing that you think they should know doing this as a career path? I think that's something that I've learned specifically from this show. Um, and all of us have different experiences. I have known I was autistic since I was five, but I never really talked about it with people until I was in college. And um, just something I kind of lived with when I was, in middle school and high school, but I know some of us um, in the company have like been like involved with like autistic or, or just neurodivergent theater groups and stuff in the past. Um, and so they knew that it was like a thing that was like a shared interest and they could like bounce like these ideas and this process, this process based, based work off of like other autistic people. Um, but something I've learned since doing this show is just like how affirmed I felt like being surrounded by other autistic people and the ways that we all learn and rehearse and do this process together. Um, so something that I would tell um, young autistic people wanting to do theater is that there is this beautiful community of other autistic people out there who love theater as much as you do and that it's not hard to find these groups if you act actually try. Especially with the internet. Yeah. Like you, it is so, I mean, you gotta be careful always, as always, but it's it's easier now than ever to find other autistic people who like what you like. Yeah, and um, yeah, I, I think there, and I think there was such a, there's been, and um, we've talked with like Ashley a lot about this, or who's one of our co-stars as well. She uh, was also diagnosed very late mm -hmm. and, um, she and and she was like nervous when she first like uh, found out about this and kind of kept it to herself as well because um, there is like a stigma around like the ability of like someone who is autistic and like what they can or can't do and mm -hmm. if like if you if you ha if you like know going into an audition room like oh this person it, it, like there there are people out there who would be like oh this person is autistic they might not be able to function in a rehearsal space as well as a neurotypical person which we here in this theater in this space have just completely debunked that myth yes. because we have seven 
principal actors making their Broadway debuts as openly autistic people who are doing the show every night mm-hmm. and have been building this show for the past two and a half years. And in addition to our five beautiful, in- incredibly talented swings mm-hmm. who have all gone on over the past week, some in multiple tracks, some in multiple tracks in the same day. Yeah. Like it, it, it is just, it is something that I have told people and we've met so many young autistic people at the stage door who have come up and been like so proud and mm-hmm. stuff to say like truly like six seven years old being like I'm autistic too and like I never at that age would have said that um mm-hmm. but it's just so nice to like have them be so excited and open to share that with exactly. us and to know that like they being so sure of themselves at that age that they will have a much like not, I'm not going to say easier time, but like just a much more vast time where you can really explore like that side of yourself through exactly. middle school and high school. And stuff. Yeah. Do you have anything to say about that, Madison? Or yeah, but, like- um, I think that for autistic people uh, getting into theater, it, it really just, it, everything does come with practice, you know? And it's like, there's going to be some things that might, make an autistic person uncomfortable in a theater space like I know personally myself like when I started doing improv like I was very scared to do it because I didn't know what was going on and like just by being able to sit and watch for a little bit I I was like okay I'm starting to feel better about this so and it's like that could apply to anything like your voice your dancing your acting like but it, it really just does like come down to like practicing and giving yourself grace because it's it's you're not going to be perfect on the first try and nobody's ever going to be perfect at anything so like our girl Hannah Montana said nobody's perfect (laughs) is there anything that you know now that you wish you knew before you auditioned for your roles not necessarily just because it was like I I, I'm glad I knew as much as I did when I auditioned because had I known the trajectory of the show because we auditioned for this two and a half years ago oh, when yeah. we were submitting like tapes for like truly just a 29 hour reading workshop mm-hmm. we were gonna be in the room for a week learning music and like reading the script maybe twice and um and so it, it that was not like a ton of pressure like yes I wanted it it was like oh my gosh I want to play an autistic character with other autistic actors right. playing autistic characters on stage but um, it like we booked this show off of self tapes and Zoom calls in yep. 2021. Um, it never was seen in person one time. I actually never. I never even did a Zoom. Like I, I, did, I never I, did either. I, did I, sent in, I sent in two self tapes. And then and some of us did Zooms and some of us didn't. But we just yeah. But um, I, I think had I known like hey by the way in two years you're gonna make your Broadway debut for this I might not have been so chill about it and <laughs> it would have like altered the way that I the amount of like the stress I had behind it oh yeah but I think something that I've learned over the past two years especially just kind of like with this show in particular there were times where we would like do it and then not hear anything about like the next steps for like months or like when we did that first workshop we didn't like we did it and then we didn't know anything was going to come from it until like March like yeah from October to March or May it was some yes of like not knowing like what was going to be next if if anything was going to happen at all um and so I think something I've learned specifically over the past few years is that what is meant for you will come to you um and I just like live by that so much now um both in professional and personal relationships um and like there are so many times where I beat myself up over like other Broadway shows or just other things in general that I was auditioning for that I really wanted but didn't get but like had I gotten those things like I would not be be here here right now like I would not be in this space and this is (laughs) yeah and this is like the most exciting best thing I've ever done so something I've learned over the past couple of years is like not it is just like trusting that what is meant for you will come to you and what you are not supposed to do is not something that's going to happen for you mm-hmm. um so that's me yeah even personally but I agree um I wish I maybe just the one thing I wish I would have known is how that I was playing like I knew that I'm playing a real person right Mm -hmm. I didn't know how accurate it was until we met in person it ended up being okay I knew nothing about the documentary when I auditioned I 
they just said they needed autistic actors and I was like oh I'm one of those so send in a <laughs> tape okay well thank you so much again for hanging out with me thank you so much it was so, so nice. nice thanks for nice talking to you it was great hanging out <laughs> <laughs>